Hi everyone, George Farmer here, content creator for Tropica Aquarium Plants. Super excited about today's Tropica Live, all about how to set up an easy Christmas aquascape. Yeah. Exciting. Are you yeah. excited? I am excited. Good. All? <laughs> yes, we're all dressed up, ready. Yeah. I did have a red nose, but I thought it might get in the way a bit. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yes, thank you to all the Tropica team, to Jonas, who is on the chat right now, Thomas, webmaster, Radu, who is our producer, coordinator. coordinator he producer. likes to call himself a coordinator. coordinator. Yeah. And obviously everybody who supports us at Tropica, because we exactly. can't do this without them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And thanks, of course, to Jewel, who have provided this beautiful Jewel Rio 125 Aquarium. Mm -hmm. And thanks to all you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Please do use the live chat as an engagement tool. Ask Jonas, our aquarium plant expert, any questions that you like. Have a chat amongst yourselves. Okay. Let us know where you're from. Um, it's Christmas, um, even if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's a, a, a great season for families to get together, have fun with their aquariums, etc. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this yeah, one. Me too. Cool. Okay, so, being Christmas, we have more giveaways than usual. We actually have five giveaways to give, to give away through the stream. Yeah. Yeah. And <sighs> interact with the gifts. Yeah. <laughs> Here yeah. we are. Yeah. So, they're actually pre-packaged up ready for you they're going to go obviously in another box but you actually get a proper 
wrapped Christmas gift. I, I, I think Radu actually know. wrapped them himself, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So five of these to give away during the stream. Um, what have we got here? Yep. Tropical Life notebook. Tropical Life towels measuring 30 centimetres by one metre, but they do shrink apparently a little bit. Is that right? They do, yeah. They okay. do shrink. Don't wash them at 60. Pens. Pens. Mugs. Yeah. And there's polo shirts as well. Yes. Awesome. And the water bottles. And water bottles. Yeah. Uh, with two plant species, Microsaur and Windelov and Pogostum and Helferi. Yeah. Good. So with that in mind, let's roll on to the Tropica merch video. Okay, Sarah, so this Christmas aquascape is completely your idea, the design and everything, and, and what kind of inspired you to go for a Christmas-themed aquascape for this Tropica Live? Well, last year I made one for Tropica, yep. which was high energy, advanced plants, mm. CO2, high light, and mm -hmm. this year I thought, let's do something completely different, let's mm -hmm. go really, really easy. Yeah. Something anyone can recreate at home. Yeah. Easy plants, something you can get the kids involved, the family involved, a yeah. little bit silly as well, because yeah. it's Christmas. It's Christmas, it's Christmas. quite have fun, haven't we? Yeah, we And do. I think um, there's something really special about involving the children there as is. well, if you, if you, obviously if you have yeah. children. Um, and I know you help from your, your son as I well. Did, I we'll, did. we'll have a little video of that later on. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I just think it's a great uh, opportunity to involve people that might not already have an interest in aquascaping it because is. you can kind of make it more fun and accessible. You can. Because, you know, you look at a high-end nature aquarium and it's expensive, it high is. maintenance, uh, you know. Yeah. But we can actually make something fun, exciting, yeah. inspire the next generation we can. of aquascapers yeah. as well. So, awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay, time for the first giveaway. Exciting. Exciting. Okay, so how many plant species do we have in which we're going to be using this aquascape not including the coconuts yeah. and if you subscribe to our newsletter you already know this so there's a you know a good opportunity to make sure you're subscribed to the newsletter for the next tropica live okay, okay so type away and your uh, on your live chat and jonas will keep an eye on all the correct answers and we'll draw a random winner at the end and we'll announce all the winners at the end mm -hmm. okay so sarah you've got a giveaway Oh. No, oh. sorry, Radu. <gasps> Radu. Oh, embarrassing. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on to the uh, aquarium setup, kindly provided by Jewel, very well known German aquarium brand. And it's a really good all in one system. It comes complete with lighting, internal filter, mm -hmm. which actually contains the heater as well, yeah. so it's nicely hidden. It's got the back background, so that's hidden as well. And this is actually an upgraded light, isn't it? It is, it so is. So this is the LED version. Yes. Uh, I think it normally comes supplied with the T5 fluorescence. They're actually LEDs now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, are they? Yeah. But they're, but they're, they're fitting they're of a light fluorescent. They're five tubes. Okay, good. But it's LED bulbs. Yeah. So, uh, but this is programmable. So you can program the yeah. spectrum, ramp it up, ramp, and ramp mm. it down, etc. But this is a, an additional add-on. You do get the regular LED tubes with yeah. when you buy it normally. Yeah. Uh, comes in different finishes. This is like a beach finish, very nice. And do you want to know a fun story about this aquarium? Okay. It's the first ever aquarium I bought. Oh. I think in 2001 or so. Okay. And um, it's it's what got me started in aquascaping. Nice. It's a nice size. It's a nice size. It's 125 litres, 33 gallons. Yeah. Quite compact, mm. uh, 81 centimetres by yeah. 36 
by 50. Mm -hmm. So it's quite tall. It is. But it doesn't take too much real estate up no, in your living space. It doesn't. So it's quite cool. Um, but my first jewelry A125 is such a special aquarium for me. It, it's got, got me started. It's when I discovered the work of Takashi Amano and I realised I wanted to go down that planted yeah. tank, yeah. you know, nature aquarium route. And it's actually the first aquarium that kind of got me noticed oh, in okay. the industry and practical Ooh. fish keeping and started writing for them and then started doing work with it's Tropica. Snowballed. Yeah, yeah. In fact, 2006, 2006, I started working with Tropica. Yeah, 15 oh, years ago. A long time ago. Makes me feel old. Yeah. <gasps> but yeah, great aquarium. Mm. Um, I managed to grow a carpet of Glossostigma. Okay. But I did have to add more lights. Oh, that would make sense. Because it had the old T8 fluorescence. Yeah. But these are more powerful now. They are. So, yeah, uh, great aquarium. Got fond memories of it. And it's a great, it's a good size. It's not too big, not too small. No. And it's a good, I think it's a good um, option for a beginner because it, it takes yeah. all the guesswork out. Mm, it does. Ah, and hopefully there's going to be a little slideshow video that Thomas is going to play of my jewellery A125. Is that right? Yes. So, going back to the, um, the aquarium itself, um, I'd never, I only just learnt about CO2 injection. Okay. And was, I think there was only two retailers in the whole of the UK that sold them. Gosh. And I had to drive like a 200, like 300 kilometre round trip to get this because okay. online, you know, it wasn't online. No, not in 2001? 2001, I think, yeah. Yeah, so there was, was really, nothing online then. Um, but that was the game changer, was getting CO2 yeah. injection, be able to grow carpet of plants. Yeah. And you know, he, I, that's where my obsession with Java ferns and crypts yeah. came from. And you can see in the slideshow, there's, you know, most of my aquascapes will, you know, contain crypts and nubius, Java ferns, all the easy classics. Yeah. But, um, yeah, good. Okay, so I think it's time to escape, Sarah. What do we do first? Substrate. What have we got? We've got soil. Yep. So we have aquarium soil. Yep, oh, yep. quite heavy. We've and got some soil, soil powder. powder. Yep. yep. And we have some sand. Okay. And what's the difference between the powder and the regular? It's the grain size. Okay. Um, powder is much smaller grain size. Yep. So it's great for in vitro plants. A tissue plant, culture. Tissue culture, yep. exactly. And plants that are a little bit more delicate. Uh -huh. Smaller roots, smaller plants. Okay. Makes sense. And also, I guess, if you're doing a really small aquarium, like a nano, yeah. you're going to get a better sense of scale, aren't you? Because if you've got these relatively large grain sizes, yeah. it's going to well. make you're going to make the aquarium look smaller than it already it does. is. I always use powder if the aquarium is smaller than 60 centimetres on the okay. front I mentioned. That's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's also good to use this as like a base and then you can top off with exactly. this, is, which is what we're doing today. It's what we're doing today, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so I think we've got some photos of the soil, different types, to give you a mm -hmm. sense, of, uh, uh, sense of scale. Are we are using some sand as well? We are. And um, we're going to kind of do a kind of rough... A rough... A rough divide. Triangle. Yeah almost offset island good so should we start doing that now i think so i think we put should we put the sand in first i think so because the sand is going to yeah. be a bit more important so we're going to go kind of this way yeah we are uh, other way around actually we're going way. that way so it will be um okay the shorter distance at the bank okay so you've got your fancy bonsai scoops i do Fancy scoop. This is a good idea for Tropica merch. It would be. Need some of these. And also. Spray bottles. Spray bottles. Yeah. Make notes, Raddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to scoop? I'd love to scoop. Yeah. A scoop. Should Let's we move lift the this whole thing up. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Okay. So I think. So did you want to draw a quick thing with your hand so I know where you want to? Well, I was actually thinking I could sprinkle some sand on. Okay. That's a rough idea. Good idea. Oh. Because with this tank, we can't actually see all the way down to the bottom. No, you've got a ledge there, which is actually quite nice. You, you, we probably want to go a bit taller than the ledge, though, to get enough uh, room yeah, to plant so we into. Yeah, can see it as well. Yeah. Well, I always find it can be quite hard when you're planting at the very front of the aquarium, because you want that front layer of soil to be as thin as possible. Yeah. So it, it's, you don't want a big, thick layer of soil. No. 
But we're not actually going to part into the sand, are we? No, we're only going to part into the, into the soil. We are. Um, and just a few kind of key characteristics about the soil. It's, a, um, it's an all-in-one product. You don't need to add any supplements to it. No. Um, there's other brands that, you know, they, they recommend using a base layer and other additives. But the good thing about the Tropica soil, it is a complete substrate system. It, it is. contains uh, lots of nutrients from the plant roots and it has um, a unique ability to take in nutrients from the water yes. and make those nutrients available to the plant roots as well. So let me get another scoop. Here we are. Yeah, a small scoop. Uh, this one here. If I start doing the soil with this end then. Yeah. Doesn't need pre-rinsing either. No. Um, so a lot of you know, gravels and sands are completely kind of laden with dust and debris. Yeah. But this is actually a very clean it is. and consistent product. Yeah, I like it a lot. I like it. Yeah. A great result. I've probably done over 100 scapes with it now, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a proven performer, absolutely. Mm. It is good. Do you think it's time for another giveaway? Just... I reckon it's time yeah. for uh, another, giveaway. another giveaway, yeah. Yeah. So on the plant list, we have the moss balls. What are the moss balls made of? That's a good it, question. It is a good question. I think they need a hint. It might not be moss. It might, no. If you need a hint, <laughs> then there is always the Tropica website. Tropica.com. Tropica.com. And you can actually sign up to the newsletter on the landing page of Tropica.com. Yeah. So there's no excuse. There is no excuse. Not to get your hands on a mm. cheeky email newsletter. Especially when we're doing a nice easy scape. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is the, is this the easiest one so far? This is the fourth Tropica Live we've done. The first one was the classic Nature Aquarium. Yeah. That was relatively easy. It was. Easy and medium category. But that did have CO2 injection. Ah, that's true. Are we going to be using CO2 injection on here? The only thing that would really need it is the Christmas moss. Does it need CO2? Well, it, if you have a high enough light, you don't. And okay. I'm actually really impressed with the specs on this light. Yeah, yeah. I so we actually wouldn't need CO2 on this one. I don't although think would, so. Did, although the plants would absolutely benefit. They would. You know, it's understandable. Some, some hobbyists, especially beginners, are a little bit reluctant to use CO2 injection. Yeah, so if, if, if that is the case, then just try to stick to the uh, Tropica's oh. easy category plants, which is the green label. Mm and you should be able to grow most of those without CO2. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to... How does that look from the front, George? I think is it too a, much sand I think the it's front? a bit too much. We too can, much? Yeah. I'm just... so short I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> we want to slope it a bit anyway. Yeah, get a sense of, uh, sense of depth exactly. by sloping it to the rear slightly. Yeah. I think that's enough there, Sarah. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a... Oh, okay, cool. It's going to be a bit quicker doing this. Yeah. Enough. Small then tank. we've got the uh, powder to put in as well. We do, but we only really need powder in this area. Okay. Did you say there's a brush somewhere, Addy? <laughs> so let us know where you're all from in the live chat. Have a chat amongst yourselves. Ask Jonas any questions. He is our aquarium plant expert. And let us know what you're doing over Christmas. Have you got any aquarium plans, any aquascaping plans, or...? Any plans at any, all, really. Any, any plans? Just yeah. let us know what you're doing at yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Do you have any plans? I'm having a relatively quiet Christmas. Hmm. Yeah, going to go and see... Uh, going to go and spend the day with um, my sister-in-law, oh, my, okay. my wife's sister. Hmm. And they have a, a beautiful home, and she, she loves her cooking. So I'm oh, excited for good. lots of nice Christmas food. Yeah. What do you, what does the Danish, we have turkey in England, what do you have in Denmark? No. You have pork or goose. Or duck, is duck one as well? Goose. Goose, goose okay. Goose, And then you have all kinds of um, side, certain side dishes. Okay. So you have um, the pickled red cabbage. Yes. Have you tried that? That's really yeah, nice. Yeah, I like, I really like that. Yeah. It's nice cold in sandwiches it, with, with turkey. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then they also have these um, caramelised potatoes. Oh, nice. You cook tiny, tiny potatoes and you cook them in butter yeah. and sugar. Nice. And they're really nice. It's not at all kind of healthy or slimming with Christmas in Denmark. Oh, no. 
Uh, where lots did you want this powder? Do you want to do the powder? You just know. in this section. Okay. Yep. Right. Just give it a pour. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. We're not messing around, are we? No. It's not like the four-hour marathon we did no, last no, no. time. But this is the whole point of this one is that it's nice and quick and easy because a lot of people don't have the time for a really high energy scape. Yeah, exactly. I'm just wondering we should put a bit more sand in here just to even out this section because it's looking a bit... Do you want to maybe just use the brush? Yeah. To flatten it out a bit. It's a nice brush. It's a lovely brush. Yeah. I have a good brush. I do. It's ready laughing at us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to talk about the the we, tree? Yeah. We could talk about the tree. Christmas is not complete without a tree. <laughs> so, it's true. Yeah. 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 So, in the spirit of Christmas and family fun, I got my son to help me make the Christmas tree. And it's made of um, like a plastic mesh. mesh. Yeah. Yeah. That you can just get anywhere. And we used Christmas moss and the I don't think we show how we made the shape, but we folded the, the mesh. Yeah, like in a, in a cone shape. Yeah, like a cone, yeah. like a megaphone. Yeah, and used yeah. um, strips. What do you call those in, the, in English? Strips. Uh, cable ties. Oh, yeah, zip ties. Yeah, cable yeah. ties. Yeah. And then we wrapped, put the moss on the tree. Okay. And I think, we can see, I think most of it's shown on the video, actually. We have the video have right the video. now, I'm hoping. Yeah. Thanks to our brilliant webmaster, Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, you can go behind, yeah, okay. go behind yeah. and then you can point, point to the Can you see the star? Uh, yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So this is the Christmas tree. Um, we've got Christmas moss tied onto the framework with um, just sewing thread. Not cotton, synthetic sewing thread. Why not cotton? Cotton rots underwater. Ah, okay. And it, it rots away in... Because it's a natural fibre. Exactly. Yeah. And after two to four weeks, it's gone completely. Go on, okay. And all the moss will fall off then. Okay. And then we have a little star. What and do we use in the end for the this star? This is Pogostum and Helferi. Helferi. And interestingly, its nickname is uh, Little Star. Little Star. Because of the, the, the leaf shape. Yeah, so it's it, a perfect star. It is. For our Christmas tree. And we did get a little bit silly in the preparation for this. <laughs> <laughs> and we've taken some... Um, Rotala Atra and just put it on and when it's underwater these open up and look like little Christmas decorations. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great too. I really love it. It's fun. I never thought I'd love an underwater Christmas tree. <laughs> no. But I do now. Yeah. Yes. So should we put it in? Yeah, let's yeah. put it in. So this is going to go, it's actually lined up with rule of thirds. Well done. I know. <laughs> why, why is rule of thirds important? It just makes things look a bit more balanced okay. and a bit nicer when you're watching it okay yeah yeah so it's more aesthetically balanced it so is. if you have it directly center 
your eyes would like dart left to right and they wouldn't really settle. They would. So if you have it off by about a third, that's yeah. like a really nice. Yeah. We use it in photography a lot. Yeah. When you look at the smartphone, it's often a grid which has got the rule of thirds. Mm. Perfect. But that should. And they've got little lead weights as, as well attached to the bottom yeah. of the mesh, so that's going to keep weights. it anchored down. Yeah. Do I need to push it down a bit more? I think it's OK. Yeah. It's not going to float, is it? No, it shouldn't do. Float it's not. been held in with the soil as well. Yeah. I would have liked to have more weights on it. OK. But it's, it's been fine with these. Yes. So There's that's spray good. Bottle. There we are. I was actually wondering the same thing. Make sure it doesn't dry out. Exactly. <clears throat> Okay, um, we can start going on to the other plants which we've prepared earlier. We have. In, for those in the UK who know what Blue Peter is. Blue Peter. Blue Peter TV programme is one we prepared earlier. Exactly. So we have an amazing array of beautiful plants from Tropica, of course. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's just put them there for now and I'm going to yeah. go through each one in turn. Okay. So let's have a look at our planting plan. So we've got the Christmas tree in already. We do. And the first plant we're going to do is the, it's an Infoides, wasn't it? Yes. This one here. So let's have a look at this up close. It's a nice plant. I've never, I've, I don't think I've really used this in aquascaping really? before. So here we have the Nymphoides, um, what's the full name? Uh, Nymphoides, is it? Nymphoides hydrophila yeah, Taiwan. Taiwan. Okay. And it doesn't get a lot, it actually gets a lot bigger than this, doesn't it? it? Does the leaves bigger. get a lot bigger. It's it quite a fast grower. As well. Does it grow like a long stem and then the big leaves at the end? It does, yeah. yeah. Uh, but a fast grower, easy category. Easy category. It doesn't need CO2 injection. No. A great space filler. It is. And it's the, quite pretty. Yes. So let's plant it. Yeah. There you go. I plant him. We both plant, shall we? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to slide the light forward, I think. Yeah, so that's a good idea. Plant. Yep. And this one is just going at the back. So we'll see it behind the tree Perfect. when it grows up. You do that. I'm going to okay. talk about our next plant, Ooh. which is the stunning Ludwigia palustris super red. And we have a video explaining mm. how we prepare a pot of that. Yeah. So I'm going to start with that over here. Okay, so here we have our Ludwigia Palustra Super Red. Very, very easy. Uh, actually, one of the few red stem plants that will stay relatively red, even in lower levels of lighting. Um, it is a very, very fast grower, and it branches readily. And it, so it's quite a brute, actually, especially in a high energy setup. So you will need to maintain it frequently by trimming, etc. maybe some replanting. Uh, but it is easy, easy category, it's a great plant for adding a focal point because of its red coloration. So consider carefully where you're going to put your red plants because it is a very high impact yeah. colour, a potential focal point. So let's have a look at your wonderful planting plan here, B. So yeah. that's going around here? Yep, yeah, it is. It's going to be in this area behind the tree. Okay. Um, and you can bring it in front of the filter as well. Okay, perfect. Because that way it will grow up and it will hide yeah. the filter a bit. Yeah, I mean, it is a black filter on a black background, so it isn't too kind of obvious, but no. it is good to hide equipment if we can. It is. Uh, I don't know about you, I, I like to use, um, ideally, um, no background with glass lily pipes for a yeah. for sort of fancy aquascape. Yeah. But the next best thing for me is, is a black background Mm. Um, and uh, you know, if you have to have any um, filter sort of pipes, you can make them black as well. Paint them, or can you buy black? Ones? You can buy black. Yeah, really? Awaze's filter fittings are black. JBLs, I, I think, as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of blue backgrounds, apart from the illuminated. Yeah. You know, like the light screens, etc. Mm. Have you ever painted the back of your aquarium? I have. Yeah, I normally paint them black if I do if I opt for okay. the black. I use black um, uh, chalkboard paint. Ah, okay. Yeah, because it uh, dries really quickly. It's a matte finish. That would make sense. And you only need a couple of coats, and it, you okay. get a completely um, flawless finish. With no, you know, because okay. you can get air bubbles with you the can, regular yeah. uh, the backgrounds that you can stick on. So planting super easy with Ludwigia. Yeah, you just yeah. grab your, your couple of stems, or you know, however many stems, and you just pop it in with your tweezers. Yeah. 
I love this plant. It is one of my go-to stems, I have to say. Yeah. It grows so fast and it just looks so pretty. And it's really great for a, for the, a new scape because it's it a is. fast grower. And it's what, what really we fast. find is the, the, the faster the growing the plant, the less chance of algae you get. Yeah, so exactly. it's a really good idea to plant as heavily as you can with a lot yep. of fast growers. It's a really good mm. tip. Okay, we've got loads of lovely gear here. We do. Those were beautiful pots, weren't they? They we, were uh, fabulous. That we got from the greenhouses earlier. Yeah. It's really long as well. Yeah. Mm. Do, do, do. Not but actually sure we need much more Ludwigia, to, to be mm. honest. No. That's probably, That's probably enough. far enough, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Third giveaway, Sarah. <gasps> Third giveaway? Amazing already. Yeah. So, it's Christmas, isn't it? Christmas, my extra gift. <laughs> so, the third giveaway. Um, what two plant species do we attach to coconuts? And you can find that. Clue? No, they have to. <laughs> <laughs> Make it hard for them. Um, well, you can find out from going on the tropica.com website. You can. Yeah. We and you're going to find out. You're going to find out soon. Yeah, for real. they'll find out yeah. soon. Okay, so that's enough Ludwig. Uh, yeah. What's the next plant we're doing, Sarah? The next plant, I think, was Lymphophilia sessiflora. No. Oh. Lagonendra mebaldi I red. Yep, okay. We can that swap that for the Sassaflora because the Lagrenda mebaldi red is actually going to go by here. Okay. And the Sassaflora is going here. So I actually think maybe do the Sassaflora first. Okay. So that's directly behind the tree, is it? Behind around? the tree in this kind of area here. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. So we have a video of the Limnophila Sassaflora and how it actually grows underwater. Um, but I wanted to show you a really cool product that Tropica do. Yeah. These are the mini pots. So these are actually coconut fibre pots, environmentally sustainable, a natural product. And the great thing about these is that these, these have been grown, as you can see, these have been grown hydroponically in the greenhouses here. So the roots have actually grown through the coconut there. And the, the, this is genius. All you have to do to plant these in fact, what I'm going to do is just remove some of those long roots there. That's going to stimulate new root growth. And all you do is literally get your coconut pot. I put one in. And then you pop it in. And it's just the easiest plant in the world, not only to prepare and plant, but to actually grow. Limnophilus sessiflora is actually, not many people know this, is one of the first aquarium plants I succeeded with. Oh. Yeah. Um, but I actually find it, I think it's such a fast growing weed. I it actually is. find it really high maintenance. It can take a lot of trimming. Yeah. But it's a really great plant for new aquascapes in particular. It is. It grows so fast, it uses a lot of nutrients up, so it helps to prevent algae. And what we've done here at Tropica, in fact, when we've been preparing um, aquascapes for shows, mm. etc., we'll do the full aquascape plan, but then we'll put in 10, 20 pots of yeah. the limna filler, just literally in their pots, and use them as helping plants, yeah. so they help to prevent algae. I do that too. There you go. Yeah. Good, so let's have a bit of a spray, make sure we don't dry yeah. out. Any more limna filler to go in? That's all five. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Next is the, the, the Lagonendra me boldi I read. Yes. I think we here? have a question as well. You have a question? I'm a beginner. Do you have any suggestions for tanks and plants? Well, this is a great suggestion here. This is a good beginner tank. It was my yeah. beginner tank and I had great mm. success with it. And if you just go on the tropica.com website, there, if you just search category by easy, yeah. any of those. Yeah. If you, if you get this system here, you can grow any easy aquarium plant from Tropica. Yeah. That, that is my suggestion. Mm. I pr think this light is probably actually, I'm not, it might even grow the advanced ones. Probably. With this upgraded light. Yeah, it's 35 watts or so. It is. It's quite so it's powerful. one watt of LED per gallon, which is actually quite a lot of it light. It is a lot. Yeah. Okay, where's the Lagonendra going? This is going in front of the Lymphilo Sassiflora. Okay, perfect. In this kind of area here. We want to keep this strip here. Right. At least the, from here across. Okay free because that's where we're going to put our little transition plant nice is that the crypt albeda brown or it's not the crypt it's the uh, marcella husura husuta husuta, husuta. Yeah, i yeah. always pronounced that one wrong no worries 
Uh, cute. We've got loads of so these. So you, you don't have to use aquascaping tweezers, you can use your fingers too with yeah. the more robust plants. Mm. I'm not sure if you want to separate this one, but I think it'll be okay as I it is. I think it's okay. Just a nice big chunky plant. Yeah. It'll add a nice bit of contrast, I think, with the um, yeah, yeah, bigger plusters. I'm going to talk about it, actually. So if we go on to camera three with the slider. <gasps> so this is the Lagonendra Meboldii Red, very similar to Crypts in terms of its leaf shape and coloration, uh, but actually grows as a rhizome. I don't know if you knew that. It doesn't send out yeah. runners like Crypts do. Um, but it's a beautiful plant, and it actually will turn more of a burgundy red colour under more intense lighting relatively low maintenance, can get quite tall depending on the conditions as well. Definitely appreciate a nutrient rich substrate like we've got here with the Tropica Aquarium soil. Um, so just a really interesting plant, I really like it, I've used it a few times. Mm. Is it one of the newer plants? It is relatively new, yeah. but from the Tropica list, yes, absolutely, mm. yeah. yeah. It's okay. going on quite nicely. It's looking good already, Sarah. It's looking good. Let's move on to our, uh, we've done that one, uh, Marsalea next. Yep. Do you want to do that? Yeah. Where I think is we it? need the other tray for that one. Yeah, do you want to go and get that? I'll go get that one. Any other questions from our audience? So, those that are watching with your family, uh, let us know. You know, let us know if your kids are watching with you. I think this is a, such a great scape to do with your kids or your younger members of the family. Maybe your partner is, you know, wants a bit of fun with a, with a Christmas themed aquascape. Oh, we've got quite a lot of that, haven't we? We've got quite a lot. That's yep. cool. Okay. So we have a, a video. No, we don't have a video on this one. Uh, Do you tweezers? Tweezers. What have I done with them? <gasps> My, oh no. I think I stole your ones. No worries. Okay. <laughs> I hid the other ones under the trays. So is this going as a transition between the sand and the soil? It is. Okay. Um, it's basically going to help keep the sand and the soil separate okay. and to hide that transition zone. Because if you put shrimp in here, they'll just move, they'll it, just move it all over. Yeah. So let's talk about, I'll let you yep, just grab a portion just... of this and you can carry on with that. Yep. So here we have our pre-prepared uh, Marcellaire Hisuta. This comes as Tropica 1, 2, Grow. And the great thing about one to grow products, uh, especially the ones that are grown in the liquid uh, media, is that it's already adapted to its underwater growth. So as soon as you put it in your aquarium, it's going to want to start growing. Whereas if you buy um, the regular Tropica pots, most of them are grown hydroponically and they have to go through a transitional stage. Um, which is fine because the plants, are, you know, if you've got a healthy plants to start with and a good system, that's absolutely fine. But a distinct advantage of the one to grow tissue culture is they start to grow really well from the start. Other advantages is that the, you, you get so many plants for your money. You have a small pot, but there's so many plants packed into them. And also you're guaranteed to be free from algae, uh, disease, pest snails, and pesticides as well. So loads of advantage of the Tropica 1-2 Grow. And the range of the Tropica 1-2 Grow is growing all of the time. I think we, it I is. don't know how many species we have now, but it's got to be 50 or so. Yeah, there's an awful lot. Yeah, and, and it's, get, it's getting bigger all the time. And I think one, you know, it, probably another couple of generations time, I think the vast majority of plants are gonna be sold this way. Yeah, I think they're great. I actually try to use just 1-2 Grow if I can. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, it's just, you know, it's environmentally as well, you know, you're not, you're not um, impacting any wild cultures. No. You know, everything's produced super sustainably here at Tropica. Mm. I mean, you've seen the laboratory, it's immense, isn't it? I haven't actually been in the lab. Oh, you've never been in there? I've never been in there, no. Oh, wow. What did you yeah. do wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I even know someone that works in the lab. Yeah, that's no, amazing. And we've, um, yeah, it's just expanding and growing all the time. So it's exciting, exciting times. Mm, it is. I always think this plant is quite cute, the way the leaves are different. Yeah, like, um, well, that, that is because this is an interesting point. So if you go into camera three again, you might be able to see there's different leaf shapes. So there's like a more of a rounded leaf, but then there's more of a clover leaf. Yeah. And the clover leaf is actually immersed growth. Oh, okay. And then the rounded leaf is submersed growth. Okay. Good. So when it's growing in the, um, in the liquid jet, in the liquid media, hmm. the bits of leaves that are pop, 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 popping out of there ah. are growing immersed. So yeah, oh, that's okay. interesting. Yeah, but you can physically see 
the, 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 the difference, yeah. characteristics of the underwater versus overwater. Have you ever used this one as a wabi kusa or on, didn't you have a, a wall or something? I had, uh, I did a paludarium. Yeah. Yeah, I've never, I've, I've used it as a regular carpeting plant. I've never used it immersed. No. No. Does it grow immersed? It looks like yeah, it yeah. should. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Because it's got these, it's got quite thick Absolutely. leaves. Absolutely, it'll grow really well immersed. Yeah. yeah. You know, like 95% of aquarium plants will grow immersed. They will, they, yeah. There's only very few species that you are, are truly aquatic. Yeah. Which is why, you know, CO2 injection is so helpful because it the is. plants are so used to growing out of water and there's all that CO2 yep. in the air. Because they're basically swamp plants, a lot of yeah, them. Mar yeah, marsh plants. Yeah. yeah. <gasps> my Don't think anyone there. noticed it. No, no, right. no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a question from Stephen589. Should I get the one to grow if I'm a beginner? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, stick with the easy category if you don't have CO2 injection or, or lower levels of lighting. Um, make sure you try, buy the pots as fresh as you can. Yeah. I always suggest, you know, having a strike up a... A uh, friend, you know, friendly relationship with your store owner. Uh, ask them when they get their next shipment of plants in. You can even request specific species, specific plants if you wanted to. Most store owners will happily order in for you. Um, but absolutely, one to grow are very appropriate for beginners. They are. Um, you're going to get less chance of melt. So I, th I think that puts a lot of yeah. people off. If you don't have ideal conditions, and you buy a regular pot. You, as it tries to adapt from its out of water growth to its underwater growth, you can get a lot of melting, can't yeah, you? Yeah, you can. Because you don't get that with the ones who grow. No. And if you stick with the easy species, you know, it's, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to get it wrong, to be honest it with is. you. It is, yeah. And there's a lot of easy ones in there now. There is, yeah. I mean, most of the, I mean, we've only got, is it the one cup of the ones? Two. We've got the floating as well, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, at least half of our plants are easy category, I yeah. would suggest. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, you carry on with the master yep. layer. Oh, we're on the fourth giveaway. Fourth already? Yes. Whew, that was quick. Okay, this is a really tough one. Okay. What is the name of Santa's lead reindeer? Oh. And if you need a clue, he's got a red nose. Yeah. Well, I did have a red nose earlier. But you did? You didn't, uh, my head's too big and it was a bit... It was the flashing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was a bit triggery. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, I've got another question. What's oh. your thoughts on the dry start method? Ooh, do you want to that, go? that can be a bit controversial, actually. It can. I've got some opinions on it. I do too, actually. You go ahead. Personally, I'm not a big fan. No, me, um, me neither. Because I, I actually prefer to plant them, yeah. flood the tank, and give them loads of CO2. Okay. Because if you give the plants lots of CO2 in the beginning, yeah. then and you have a light that's appropriate for the plants, yeah. I find they don't need anything more. And if you do dry start, they have to transition over to submerge. Exactly. And I don't think that's good it's, for the plants. It uses a lot of energy doing it that. It does. Yeah. An and it's, lot. it's going for a two step process, isn't it? It is. Especially if you, I mean, some people will try to do a dry start with one, two grow. Oh, and wow. That's been, uh, so it has to adapt from its under water underwater. to over water, then back to and underwater. Then, oh. so. But I'm, I'm with you. And I, you know, aquascaping for me is about creating an aquascape. Yeah. The dry stop method isn't aquascaping. No. There's no water. <laughs> it's dry. No. No. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, simple as Plus, that. Plus, you've got the risk of mould. Is it mould? Yeah, yeah, fungus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I have had success with it. I did a really cool experiment with um, moss. I use, oh, not moss. I use Ricardia. Okay. Common dry folia yeah. and physidens. Okay. Chop them all up really fine in a blender. Oh, okay. And then blended it with um, some yogurt. yogurt to stop the fungal yeah. build up. And that was really good okay. results of it, yeah. That is cool. Yeah. So okay, where are we now? We are on the Cryptocryne Albeda Brown. Beautiful plant. And then the Staragina Rupins. I think we have a video about the Albeda Brown. Oh. So, you start planting. I'll start planting. I'll have a little chat about yep. the beautiful Cryptocryne Albeda Brown. I it's one of the, it's yeah. quite a small crypt, one of the smaller ones that we do here at Tropica. Um, I think the only other smallest one is um, probably Parva, Crypt Parva. Yeah. Um, but it will get it will get bigger than this. It can grow to sort of 15 centimetres tall, depending on 12 to 15 centimetres tall, depending on your conditions. But it has a very unique narrow leaf with a beautiful brown coloration, which will actually 
under good lighting you can get a really kind of diverse mix of colours in the leaf like going mm. from speckly green speckly reds it's a really really beautiful plant slow growing it's medium category so it will benefit from more light and co2 injection um but yeah it's a great plant really beautiful and i love it like i do most crypts actually yeah do you like crypts i do what yeah. why do you like them i quite like the variation you get with the size and the leaf shape yeah and they're quite nice as accents and to hide yeah things yeah like if you put um if you've got stem plants for instance exactly. you could put crypts in front of the stem you plants because the lower portions of the stems are yeah aren't so good are they mm. where are we planting the we're planting in this area here oh so it's not not, not quite that far george over here oh sorry <gasps> George, so about halfway in front of our little accent plants okay. that we have over here, and then we're going in front of the tree. Oh, okay. So these are basically going to hide the bottom of the stem plants a little bit. Yeah, because what you can happen with stem plants, so these are the plants with stems with leaves coming out either side. Mm. What can happen is the lower portions can start to look ugly because they, they don't can. get much light on those no. lower leaves. So it's a really good idea to have plants or even hardscape in front of those lower portions of your stem plants. Yeah. I normally hide the very bottom of my stem plants. Yeah. I don't use stem plants very often. <laughs> <laughs> Something I would like to know about the tree again. The tree again? Okay. Okay. Do you want to talk about the tree, Sarah? Yeah. So what kind of things do people want to know about the tree? You could repeat how it's how, 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 how did you make it? How did yeah. you make it? So we got some green craft mesh. Um, it's like using gardening. Can't it's like using gardening, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think this is actually, this one is a gardening one. Okay. And then it got rolled up into cone. like a megaphone cone shape. Yeah, like a cone, yeah. Like, like a an cone. ice cream cone. Yeah. yeah. And then we used strips. So uh, cable, cable ties. ties. Cable ties. <laughs> strips. It's what you call them in Danish. <laughs> <laughs> We use cable ties and use those to secure the cone in its shape. Then once that was done, we trimmed the end of the cable ties, put moss on top of the tree and wrapped sewing thread around the moss in a crisscross pattern. Because I like to do a crisscross pattern when I tie moss to things. About a centimetre in between each overlay. It was a little bit more difficult to do it that way with my helper, but I did my best. <laughs> this is your son, Vigo. This is my son, Vigo. Hi, Vigo, if you're watching. Yeah. Hi. Um, great little helper, actually. And um, he was extremely keen on spraying the moss tree while we were making it so it didn't dry out. That's one of his favourite parts about spraying. it. Spraying the... I love spraying. It's good fun. Yeah. So he, he may have sprayed me in the face a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're 45 minutes in already. That's Let's pretty good. Let's switch it up a gear. Yeah. Okay, we're going for Staragani repens, and we do have a video about that, all about how it grows underwater. Do you want to plant that in our yeah. do the Liliopsis? All the way in the front. All around the front. Another question. Do you think using pre-made hardscapes such as bonsai driftwood and etc. cheapens the quality of your aquascape? Um, it's a good question. It's a good question. That's, I'm not sure I agree with the word cheapens, and it's all down to personal taste and subjectivity. So the answer, simple answer is no. Um, but for the purists that want to, you know, go that extra mile, create their own, you know, detailed hardscape out of lots of, you know, small pieces together, um, you know, getting that extra level of connection with your hardscape, I guess, then you could argue that using pre-made stuff could arguably cheapen it but you know it's, it's down to personal taste it is it? and then um, there's no there's no right or wrong way to aquascape really as long no. as you have fun doing it and you're not yeah. hurting anyone and you're not damaging any you know the environment particularly or yeah you know it you can get you can get as you know i don't like to use the word snob, snobbery it is you can either. you can get quite you know the purists and, and i completely respect them that's fine but i i'm it not a big fan of criticizing people for mm. having a different taste and something no and it needs to be as a hobby it needs to be available to everybody yeah and it could be a gateway you know someone 
Exactly. If someone sees a nice bonsai in a, in a shop and they think, oh, that would, you know, that looks good and I can, I can do that, that's easy yeah. for me to create something quite beautiful quite easily, mm -hmm. then that's a good thing. It and is then a good thing. as they get more into the hobby, then they might want to, you know, stretch themselves a bit and, and go a bit more advanced with their hard Yeah. Scoping. The but funny thing is, when you get to the more advanced end, a lot of people are making their hardscape and they're using, they're gluing things together. Yeah. They're using silicone and glue and wadding to make things stick yeah. together. And it almost goes into sculpting anyway. It is like a 3D, yeah, 3D art form of sculpting, absolutely. Mm. Um, I'm just going to have a quick chat about this beautiful carpeting plant, Liliopsis brasiliensis. And I think we have a video on that about how to prepare the tissue culture version. This oh. is the this is the potted version, which is um, distinctly longer, bigger leaves than the than you'd find in the tissue culture. Um, but it's it's actually an easy carpeting plant. It is. That's why I picked it. Yeah, and it's yeah. slow growing, so it's actually a really kind of nice, sustainable carpeting plant. Yeah. Um, when you see it, a, a full lush carpet of liliopsis actually looks really beautiful. Beca but because it is quite slow growing, it can attract algae. That's that's what I've experienced. Yeah. I don't know about you, Sarah. I've only ever used it once, right. years and years ago, when I was quite new to the hobby. Okay. And um, it was, I put it in an aquarium, mm -hmm. and it was, it was one of the last plants I added before I took everything down. <laughs> <laughs> so I never really you actually had a chance to properly work with it. Oh, okay. No, it's a beautiful plant, though. It's um, not, not actually used that often. It's not, no. So it's nice to see it showcased here, actually. It is. I think we're right. I think I that's think enough. So. Yeah. Put a little bit to plant. Keep moving the front. star. It's beautiful. Can I just get rid of the star now? <gasps> <gasps> what about Father Christmas? Yeah. Would you, did you call him Father Christmas over here or Santa Claus? Eula Man. Eula Man. Eula Man. Eula Man. Yeah. Because Yule is Christmas and Man because he's a Christmas man, so it's Eula Man. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, We're on the algae we on the, 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 the We're on the, the final three. Yeah, we're on the moss balls. Moss balls? Not actually made of moss. Where are they? There they are. They're over here. Uh, I don't know where they're going. They're going to be... Are they like Christmas? Do you want to have a look at the... the I have my planting diagram back here. So we're going to have some just scattered anywhere over here. They look appropriate. Okay. And a few are going to go around, around the, the coconut. Okay. Well, we'll leave the ones that go around the coconut to the end, mm -hmm. and then we'll put these in now, then. Just artistically scatter them around, maybe around the front or around the tree somewhere. Because the moss balls... Artistically scatter. I like artistically that. scatter them, because they're fun, the moss balls. They are fun, aren't they? Um, have you used the, them much? The, the, no, I haven't. You haven't? No, no. <gasps> I have seen them used to great effect though. Yeah. You need to take them out and roll them right. every few weeks because okay. they can start to change shape a little bit. Okay. Do they attract a lot of debris? Not really, no. No, but you have a lot of shrimp though. So I guess they're I always... I yep. I bet shrimp love moss balls, don't they? Shrimp are... They love everything. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. A bit of a spray again. Yeah. Ooh. Nine Let's minutes. do some spraying. How are we doing? We're good. We've got nine minutes to the hour. Oh! We might run over the hour mark somehow. Wow. No worries, we're having fun. We are. Oh, I see. I see we have a loose plant on the run. Oh, it's time for the uh, coconut. Coconut choice. So, <laughs> coconuts. Coconuts. Should we talk about coconuts a bit first just to tease everybody? We can do. Can talk about coconut. So we've got a new product. We do have a new product. Involving coconut shells yes. and plants. And we're going to go and I'm going to go and show you them right now. Yes, perfect. Okay. Off you go, George. Here we go. Okay, so I think we have, here we are, some beautiful Hygrophila pintafida attached to our coconut caves. So it's a brand new product from Tropica. As you can see, we've got the Hygrophila pintafida grafted to the coconut shell. And the unique thing about Hygrophila pinnitifida is it can be grown as a stem plant, planted in soil or substrate, but also attached as an epiphyte, which we've got here attached to the coconut shell. So here at Tropica, we graft the pinnitifida using an elastic band, 
and then over time those roots are going to creep over the coconut shell and attach really securely. And it's a great focal point plant, a great addition to any aquascape where you want to encourage you know, shelter breeding behaviour with a pair of fish for instance. So a really great addition to an aquarium. Let's go and take a look at some more coconut shell products. Okay, so now we're going to look at some coconut shell with Anubius vartari and Nana attached. So very similar principle to the Hygrophila pinnatifida. It's attached to the coconut shell with an elastic band. And then over time, these roots and the rhizome are going to self-attach to the coconut shell. So exactly the same principle. We have a, a cutout here for any shrimp or fish that might want to use this as a shelter for breeding, etc. But a really great addition, instant impact to any aquascape. Perfect for beginners. Anubius nana, one of the most easy plants to go for. Okay, so here we have our Hygrophila pinnatifida and our Anubius nana attached to coconut. Let's head back to the studio and choose which is our favourite. Hi again, George. Hi, here we have our beautiful coconut shells. One with Hygrophila pinnatifida mm -hmm. and one with Anubius nana. With a flower. With a flower. So Anubius uh, is one of the few species that will flower underwater. Buca philandra does as well, quite prolifically. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on Do you like them? I like them. Yeah. I think and they're, they're fun, they're a bit silly, but I like them. Yeah. Okay. And you can, if you plant things so that you've got the plant in shadow, but some light just hitting the flower, yeah. you get this really nice little spotlight yes. in the tank. Yeah, yeah, a nice feature, yeah. aren't they? Okay, so um, question for you guys. What do you prefer, the Anubius nana or the Hygrophila pinnativida? Quickly write your answers now, yeah. and then whoever gets the most votes in the next 30 seconds will go for that one. So we've already talked about in the video about how these are made and everything, mm. um, but how, how would you use it? Would you use this like for shrimp shelters, or what would you do? I would actually use it for beaters. Ah, oh, betters, or Bet beaters, betters, or betters, betters, betters. Yep. Yeah. because they love caves. Oh, okay. They are obsessed with caves. Why is that, just shelter? Shelter. The wild ones are particularly obsessed. Okay. Um, I had the tree in my aquarium at home the last yeah. week, yeah. and my wild beater kept going in there constantly. <laughs> cool. There you go. So if you're a better keeper or a shrimp keeper, yep. then definitely something worth considering. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, look to the live chat and see how many votes we've got. <gasps> or is there a clear winner? I, my favourite's the I got for a pin and to feeder. I don't know about you. I'm not sure. I actually thought it was going to be the Hygrophila pinnatifida because I quite like this plant. But when I saw the Anubius, it does look nice. It's quite cute. Yeah. So do we have a winner yet? A clear winner? Yeah. Uh, not you yet. Invite them to vote. There's like a button where they can vote. Oh, vote. A vote. There is a poll, is there? Poll. Oh, I didn't know that. Me so yeah. there's a poll. Vote. vote. Now, please. Now. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do because we're I'm conscious of time. Yeah. We'll just put that one in there for now. If the vote is decided to go against the Anubius, then we can. Put that one in as well. I mean, that's cute. That does look cute. It does fair. look quite cute. I like the contrast and textures of the leaves with everything else. See, this is quite similar texture to this one. It is. I like the contrast. Yep, and personally. the, the colour change yeah. will be quite interesting in it here. Will. It can go quite red. Do you want to have some okay. fun with your moss balls? Some moss balls. Okay, let's have a bit of a spray. I'm actually wondering if we should rotate the coconut slightly uh -huh. so that for purists out there, the hole won't be visible. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> I think the purists out there wouldn't really appreciate an underwater Christmas tree. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think that? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's all fun, isn't it? That's it what is Christmas is about. Fun. Holiday season. Exactly. Let's have fun. Family fun. Um, Last plant is a floating plant. We'll put that in once we've got the water in. So let's mm -hmm. get the water in now. Yeah. Here we are, using our wonderful filling contraption. And our mug. And our special yeah. mug. Should I put it on this side? Yeah. The hygrophila one. Yeah, the hygrophila yeah I, knew it, one. I knew it would. I told you. Yeah. Is the water on? Should I go turn the water on? Yeah, it needs to be yeah. turned on. Not too... <laughs> Too powerfully? Uh, you can do whatever and I'll just adjust it on this valve. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so last giveaway, fifth and final giveaway. 
When was the last Christmas aquascape made? <laughs> Would they need to know the month and the year and the location? Just the month and the year. Just the month and the year, okay. Good one. It was made by Sarah. It was a great cape, actually. That was our first sort of collaboration with Sarah, wasn't it? How's the water? Yeah, it's fine. Good. Okay. Oh. The nice thing about filling it on the sand site. Yeah. Oh. Do, 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 do. Is this a different length to the one we had last time? I don't know. No. I thought it was longer for some reason. Yeah, I think it was a shallower tank last time. It's quite a tall tank. It's 50 centimetres and you've got this ledge edge on it as well. So. Yeah. Oh, I'll just leave that like that. So that's running. It's disturbing the sand slightly. But that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. The sand's quite clean. It is. Okay, the fifth giveaway's done. Fifth giveaway? God, look at that, 1958. We're doing really well. Doing really well. So that's going to take a good few minutes to fill up. Mm -hmm. um, use this as an opportunity to ask any, any questions for myself or Sarah or Jonas, who's on the live chat, of course. Yep. So, talk about the old... Yeah, so you made, a, you made a beautiful aquascape last year. I did. That was good fun. And I think we've got a video of it. Oh. Is that right? We might do. Excellent. Should we watch the video? Yes. So when you set your Christmas aquascape up, was it last year, wasn't it? Last year. And how long did you run it for? Um, it's actually, in a way, still running now. Oh, really? Really. Oh, um, the plan was I was actually going to take it down in the summer. Right. But then um, plans changed, basically. Um, but I'd actually taken out half the plants. So I've kept it going with what's in there right now. Okay. Moved a lot of my fish over and my shrimp over. Yeah. I'm officially taking it down over the holiday season. Okay. Have you got a plan for a new scape? Semi plan. A contest tank? Probably not, no. Um, I've been thinking about having it as a contest tank. If it looks good, I might enter it into something because yeah. why not? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm actually planning on having a tank that I can keep my Ottosynclus uh -huh. and my Harrogeridonium. Okay. What are they? Harrog I've never heard of those. You don't know those? No. Oh, they're great. What are they? Fish? They're a nano fish that is like a tiny prehistoric catfish. Right. Um, a little bit creepy looking, mm -hmm. but I quite like that in my aquarium with my fish. Yeah. So they're, they're tiny. They're about three centimetres long. They come originally from, um, I think it's Bangladesh, and a little bit over um, into Northern Thailand. Okay. And they look, have you ever seen scorpion fish, scuba diving? Yeah, yeah. They look a bit like a freshwater version. Oh, wow. Only tiny. Cool. Um, and they've got the smallest eyes I've ever seen on a fish. Well, I'll have to check them out. I've never. I yeah, don't think I've ever seen them. they're really, really nice. Um, you need to be really careful, though, with the type of net you catch them in. All right. Because they've got um, barbs, Bar barbels, barbs yeah. on the side fins. OK. Because otters are bad because they have those little barbels that come up around the nose. Yes. But Harrogeridoni have these side fins that stick out with these almost like serrated edges. Oh, I think you've shown me a photo of them. And light on. Yeah, yeah, really beautiful fish. Yeah, brown and orange and white and spots. Oh. A question. Oh, I've got a question. George, my aquariums are in my room, so I like them to be aesthetically pleasing, even though I also want to breed in them. How can you make that work together? That's a great question. Yeah. 
I'm going to get the one over to you, Sarah, because okay. you're a bit of more of an expert on breeding fish than I am. Have you ever bred fish? Not deliberately. Not deliberately. <laughs> um, well, I would actually say, is it? Are we talking about fish or shrimp? Should we do both? Yeah. Yeah. Um, shrimp. Um, I actually keep shrimp with fish that are big enough to eat them. So with shrimp, I would always have something like moss, where the baby shrimp can hide. Yes. And then I actually have stem plants planted next to that, very, very densely planted, so my fish can't swim through them. Oh, okay. And so the babies tend to survive and grow up for the first few weeks in the moss. Yep. Then they move to the stem plants, and they learn about the danger of the fish. Okay. And can run back and hide. Interesting. And shrimp, I find, are really easy to breed. Um, oh, yeah. I give them a mineral pellet every week. Yeah. Um, if there's not much algae, I give them some complete food, algae food for shrimp. Mm -hmm. Um, Otter Sing Plus, I haven't managed to breed yet. No, they're quite, they can be quite delicate as well, can't they? They are. Yeah. Oh, they're bomb proof for me. Yeah. Um, but um, breeding is meant to be quite difficult to trigger. Okay. But that's actually why I got my Corridoras. Yeah. Because it's meant to trigger the Ottos. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on another tangent about, go for about it. this. Um, I would actually encourage you to consider biotope aquascaping. Yes. Um, because you can create a beautiful layout, but still make it an absolutely perfect home for the fish, which would then you encourage can. breeding. You can. So if you look at the previous Tropica Live yeah. I did with Tice Treatment, mm. it was a great example of a biotope aquascape. Not, not, yeah. You're not kind of compromising aesthetics or welfare of the fish. No. Which is the ideal. It is. Because a lot of people think biotopes are really ugly, or it's just bare sound or, or bare twigs. Or yeah, or black water, black mud, water. muddy water with you know, hardly any plants. Yeah. But, you know, freshwater habitats are so diverse. Yeah. And, you know, we've only just scratched the surface, really, in terms of what we see in the aquarium hobby, in terms of replicating yeah. these biotopes. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm really, mm. you know, really keen to be working with, with Ty, you know, previous yeah. guest on Tropica Live. Yeah. So we're filling up a bit more rapidly now. I think that Christmas tree looks amazing. It's cute. Let's move this light forward a touch. How's yeah. the exposure doing, Thomas? Should we take out the bag? You can eat. Yeah, you can probably take it out now without disturbing stuff too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can take it out. Yeah. I didn't realise the moss balls floated. Ah, uh, squeeze them. Sometimes they float. Yeah. So with the moss balls, just grab them. Squeeze them. Squeeze them to get all the air bubbles out. Yeah. I don't know if you can see where I squeeze my one. Yeah. And then it should sink. Mm hmm And if you rotate them in your hand, it helps them keep their shape. Yeah, that's good. So do we need a moss ball at the front or on the tree somewhere or is this from coconut I think here where my finger is. Yeah, over there. Yeah, perfect. I guess I'll take the cup out as well. Yeah. Good old trusty tropical mug. Someone's asking about that nano fish you mentioned, Sarah. The nano fish is called a Harajeridone. You want to spell that? Yeah, um, Hara is um, H A R E, and then Geridoni is J A. J E R O D A I, I think. Um, really, really nice little fish. Um, I'm not sure if they eat baby shrimp, <laughs> but um, a lot of people say they're nocturnal. But my ones are very active in the day. That's cool. And I think they might be, um, they might have the same function as Corridoras, where they clean the sand. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing, isn't it? Do we have enough water in here now? Nearly. A bit more, maybe? Nearly. Did I get the height of the tree right when I built it? Perfect. Oh, I did a good job on that. Good job. Yeah, quite proud of myself. It's quite a reddish hue to the light, isn't there? There is, but I'm not sure what mode we're in. No, just leave it for now. It's fine. Well, if I push it, hold the button for three seconds, we'll go into maintenance mode. Okay. Which is all I'm the just colors. conscious of how it's going to affect the exposure on the. Can I risk it, Thomas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just go for it. Try it. Oh, that's better. There we go. So that's maintenance mode. 
Yeah. And it's all the light channels at, uh, at max. max light for, I think, 30 minutes or one hour. That's much, that's much better, isn't it? Yeah. I was quite impressed. Is that overexposed now? <laughs> 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 that's the trouble, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that looks great, Sarah. Great job. Just that's cute. Straighten that sand part. I was actually thinking exactly the same thing, that that sand is, is going to... Trigger my... Uh, yeah, it's, it's the kind of aquascaper in me is going, oh, no, 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 we can't deal with have that. <laughs> put my hand in as well. Oh, and we have a little oh, finishing touch, don't we? We've got the floating plant, but we're all going to put some snow in. Oh, that's right, we so can get our snow. Let's talk about the floating plant quickly. Floating plant, yep. Uh, which is here. Yeah. And we have a video of this. This is Philanthus fluitans, commonly known as red root floater. As you can see here, it's green. Mm. But under good lighting, it will turn red. And we have a video of this looking absolutely beautiful. So, uh, great to use floating plants, especially in new scapes, because it helps to limit algae. And we just literally throw it in. Pop it in. Yep. And if you want, you can actually use uh, two suction cups with some fishing line tied oh. on them. Have you ever tried that trick? No. You get two suction cups and you work out where you want the floating plant to be, so I would have it oh, okay. in the back corner. Yep. You put a suction cup on the two different walls yep. and then you put the plant on the other side of the fishing line and the fishing line ties it just keeps between. It, in, like it harbor. just keeps it under control. Yeah, because especially in high circulating water you're going to get them all kind of just... You can. Looks a bit annoying. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we can announce the winners. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do one each. Right. I'll announce the winner of the first question. Okay. I actually know this guy. I was going to say, I recognise that name. Dave Scopes. Congratulations, Dave. Yep. Awesome. And no. I know the second guy as well. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> is it rigged? No. no. These things are never rigged, okay. Sarah. So number two is Benjamin Pritchard. Congratulations. Uh, shout out to Ben. He's uh, actually a Paralympian. Oh. And I did a, a, oh, did a skate for him a few weeks ago. Is he a ago. rower? Yeah. Yeah, top guy. Uh, Jacob Hill. Another fourth one. I don't know Jacob Hill. Number four is Sarah Scapes. It's not you, is it? Not me. That not is me. A fix no, no. If it is. That's just it. And then the fifth one is Schmitzville. Schmitzville. So congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. If you email us at live at tropica.com and we will get in touch with you and send you your Christmas giveaways. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank congratulations. you for entering. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Next slide, please, Raddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, final thanks to everyone. What, have you got a question? We came to snow. Oh, we haven't done the snow. We haven't done the snow. I'm getting carried away. You did. The Christmas silliness. Shall I do the you snow? Do the or snow. Do you do the Yeah, I, do I don't snow? want to take your fun away. Yeah. <laughs> this was actually Radu's idea. Radu was a bit obsessed with Christmas. Radu's like, this is his whole thing. It's all for Radu. All for Radu. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> that actually looks quite realistic. It does, actually. Like a snow globe, doesn't it? It's like a snow globe. Yeah. I love it. Should I sprinkle more? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Put some on the hygrophila as well. Yeah. I've never had so much fun aquascaping. <laughs> it's not meant to say that, George. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, I hope everyone's really enjoyed that. I have. Have you, Sarah? I have. It's been great fun. Yeah. Um, I think it just shows you, you can create something really fun, really beautiful, with a relatively simple setup. Easy plants, some medium plants, you know, an all-in-one system, built-in lighting, heater, filtration, cabinet, everything you need. And I think it's a great example of what you can achieve. And hopefully, you know, have fun with your family while doing it as well. Yeah. yeah. You should do some snow as well. It's I'll need fun. to do the snow. It's good fun. Yeah, yeah, I won't want to get it. Though. It looks so pretty going down. It's nice, isn't it? It does. Having fun at Tropica. <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. Okay. Okay. So, uh, thanks to Joel for supplying this beautiful yeah. system. Uh, thank you to the entire Tropica team, especially Thomas, Radu, yeah. Jonas, and Sarah. Thank you. Uh, really grateful to the audience, you guys, yeah. especially for watching. We really appreciate it. Do stay tuned. Do sign up to the newsletter yeah. to get informed of future updates, mm -hmm. future future. <laughs> Uh, Tropical Lives. Yeah. Um, got some really exciting ones for the new year. We do. Um, not going to give any spoilers no. away. You'll need to sign up to the newsletter to find out what those are. 
Um, follow us on our social media channels, so Instagram, Tropica Aquarium Plants, yep. YouTube, of course, Tropica Aquarium Plants, and Facebook, Tropica Aquarium Plants. Yep. If you want to have the opportunity of having your content, your photos, videos, etc., featured, then use the hashtag made with Tropica, Tropica Aquarium Plants, and Tropica Live. Mm. So thanks everyone again. Oh, I've had great fun. I hope you have too. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheerio. Bye. Thank you.